Hi and welcome to JRR Armory Long Range Shooting Series. Today we are going to analyze the train sniper scene from the movie Gemini Man, recently released, featuring Will Smith. To make a long range shot, first uh, of all we have to choose the proper caliber. Choices are 300 Whitman, 338 Lapua Magnum or 338 Normal Magnum. And you will see uh, Will Smith has chosen for his sniper shot a uh, Remington 700 in 300 Win Mag. So good choice regarding the long range caliber. However, for our purposes of analysis today, I'm gonna give him an upgrade. I will uh, run the numbers based on the 338 Lapua Magnum, which I shoot. And uh, since I don't have 300 Win Mag, uh, I don't have the exact ballistics. However, uh, they are very close and uh, very comparable. In order to make a long range shot for about 1200 meters, we have to calculate and account for many variables. First of all, we need to have the exact range to target. Will Smith is using a laser to range the target. The closest distance is 1242 meters. And of course, he is acquiring the train at much longer distance. He's also controlling the ammo temperature by having the cartridge inside his jacket and therefore ensuring a very predictable muzzle velocity. He's also taking environmental readings and wind readings to account for all the environmental factors. And he is also being informed by his uh, spotter, if you will, inside the train regarding the speed of the moving target or of the train. The 338 Lapua Magnum is one of the best long range cartridges and I'm gonna use uh, my ballistic tables for it. Uh, I'm assuming a muzzle velocity of 2700 feet per second. Of course you can push a bit higher if you want this uh, value. And uh, for a 1200 meter range the time of flight is approximately 2 seconds. Confirm. Also, you have to keep in mind that you have to account not only for wind drift, but also for Coriolis effect, especially on the horizontal side, and also spin drift of the bullet. If this were to be a static target, under uh, ideal field conditions, with a very accurate uh, rifle-shooter combination, you'd have a probability of hit of 90% at 1200 meters for an IPSC, so human-sized torso target. However, for our movie, they decided to go for a skull-sized target, which is uh, much smaller, of course, so we are looking at a 6-inch circle diameter target. Again, under ideal field conditions with a static target, the probability of hit at 1200 meters it's only 20%. So from the start, this shot is doomed to failure because under perfect conditions with aesthetic targets, we would hit only with 20% probability. Nevertheless, let's run the numbers and see what would it take to make this shot. Normally for 308 cartridge with movers or moving targets, you have uh, about two mils lead for every three speed. miles per hour of speed. And this works roughly around 400 yards right, plus whatever. minus. But of course, in our movie, we are dealing with much different numbers. The train speed, uh, as communicated, is 238 kilometers per hour, or roughly 148 miles per hour, or 66 meters per second, or 217 feet per second. The distance of our target, 1242 meters, it's about three quarters of a mile, about 1400 yards, or about 4000 feet. Confirm. Confirmed. Clear. Go to green. And this is where uh, this shot uh, probability is uh, going down the drain. The average reaction time for a human is about quarter of a second. So 0.25 seconds average with a standard deviations of one one hundredth of a second. So um, it means that if we try to have a predictable trigger reaction time, we will be with a probability of 68% plus minus one hundredth of a second 
from our average reaction time or train reaction time. If the train is moving very fast, 216 feet per second, it also has to stay constant, so we are ignoring that it might slow down before the tunnel. And uh, in the time of flight of two seconds, plus the trigger reaction time, the train will travel a distance of approximately 434 feet or 145 yards or 132 meters. So the challenge is, first of all, how do you ensure that you offer the appropriate lead of target acquisition to ensure that the target meets the bullet at the same time? So at this distance, you would have to dial and hold um, most likely 110 mils because we are at 1200 meters and you have to hold 132 meters and you start to see the problem no scope in the world lets you dial this amount and even with a reticle it's basically impossible to have the appropriate dial and hold to ensure the appropriate lead for the bullet so this is first problem the second problem is that with the speed of the train, 217 feet per second or 66 meters, we are moving outside of the target range within plus minus one one thousandth of a second. So in one one thousandth of a second, the train moves 6.6 .6 centimeters or 2.6 inches. So plus minus, it means we are moving six inches almost within plus minus one one thousandth of a second. So it means that the reaction time to trigger the shot, to have the time of flight and to be precisely meeting the target needs to be synchronized within one one thousandth of a second, which is basically impossible. So therefore our probability of hit when it was a static target is 20% multiplied with 0% timing chance equals 0% probability of hit Therefore, this shot is completely busted. However, let's see maybe under other circumstances um, what could make this shot possible. So first of all, we have to slow down the train. So I slow down the train now by a factor of 10 with only 24 kilometers per hour or roughly 22 feet per second. Also, the speed would have to be perfectly constant, but let's assume we are able to make that happen. Nothing changes in our reaction time. However, now with a time of flight of two seconds, the train is moving while the bullet is in flight speed. only 43 feet or 14.4 yards or 13.2 meters. To provide the appropriate lead for the bullet, to meet the target at the right point in time and at the right uh, place in space, we need to dial or hold 11 mils for the 1200 meters target distance. This is now within the realm of possibility, either by dialing or most likely by a combination of dial and hold. Also, um, the scene that shows him tracking the target with the rifle scope but the previous speed of the train is completely impossible. So coming now to the slow down train, you see that everything that was one one thousandth of a second, now it's possible to be done within one one hundredth of a second. So therefore the train moves about 2.6 inches within one one hundredth of a second. So plus minus, it means five inches. So if we are able to synchronize everything within precisions of one one hundredth of a second, then um, we might be able to somehow make this shot. So if we go to the standard deviation of the reaction time of one one hundredth of a second, plus minus gives us a probability of 68%. And if we just multiply that with the 20% probability of a hit of a static target, we are now roughly below 15% probability. Again, this is still under best case scenarios, rifle, shooter, wind, muzzle velocity, pretty much as good as it gets and being able to trigger the shot and be precise within one one hundredth of a second. This would make this hit plausible, maybe even for a Hollywood movie. However, it is still highly unlikely.
I hope you enjoy our analysis of the train sniper scene from the Gemini Man movie. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe, comment, subscribe and share. And we'll see you with the next one.